again. Um, they make keynote speakers work twice here, uh, but it's for a good cause. Uh, and this is the fun part, because I get to interview a startup called Climaworks, uh, and they're trying to capture carbon and reduce the pollution that we are all making every day. Um, so that will be the person I will be uh, interviewing shortly today. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Anna. Um, so the question I think that we're all thinking about, but they are not always asked, is how does it actually work? How do you capture carbon? And perhaps why what you're doing is better than what someone else is trying to do, or if you're collaborating with others to come to the solution faster? So uh, what Climax is doing, we're building machines which are capturing CO2 out of the ambient air. And uh, you have to imagine uh, a big, a big um, square. So it's it's a, a collector. We call it CO2 collector. You can see one downstairs at the at the booth of Audi. And inside this collector, we have a filter material. And this filter material is attracting CO2. Imagine that CO2 is an acid. We're building a base, and when they're meeting each other, they're they're forming a, a weak chemical bonding. And this is basically the the mechanism we are using to capture CO2 from the air. So it's a box with filters, essentially? Exactly. OK. Um, my second question is, since I have read that you started back in 2007, um, and the nice part is that it's an example of a knowledge triangle, because it started at ETH in Zurich, at the Research Institute. Um, and then we had this collaboration of research, education, business coming together. Um, 13 years later, um, have you scaled? Uh, you know, how much have you scaled and what are the plans to, to move forward with this technology? So back to 2007, in, at ETH in Zurich, we were capturing a few milligrams uh, each day, so uh, not really climate relevant. Today we're capturing a couple of thousand tons uh, with our machines every year, so we have already scaled uh, by a factor of more than a billion. And this is also what uh, the, the scale we also have in front of us. So we need to be able to capture billions of tons of carbon dioxide every year. And the technical scale-up is definitely one thing we have in front of us. But this is only one part of the, of the equation. On the other, uh, other side of the equation, we also need to do something with the CO2. What do we do with billions of tons of CO2? So in one hand, we need to create a market but also we need to create technologies which can use the CO2 for, for further processes and materials. Why would people even you know, purchase your technology? You, know, you can now pollute for free, right? Or can you not? Is it, is it a moral decision? Is it a corporate responsibility? I think, I think there are different reasons. We have heard before today that Google pledged to be um, carbon emission zero by 2030, and there are many other companies as well with this target, so the, to remove their footprint, to take their responsibility, not to have a footprint on the climate. And companies like this, they need to have solutions, and the solution, our engineered solution is one of them, there are other solutions as well, and these solutions need to be developed uh, up to scale where they can really do the job. Thank you. I think you're also being a little modest. Um, perhaps you can share your path with us. You know, um, I have my other hat. I've been involved with a different, um, you know, innovation ecosystem, uh, including the European Institute for Technology and Innovation (EIT). Uh, and my understanding is you initially got the seed funding from them. And uh, this is a global conference, but the focus has been on Europe. And if you read the reports, it's always about how Europe uh, doesn't have the right ecosystem yet, that it's catching up with some other competitors globally. Is that true, or did it really work in your case? I think it's, it's kind of both. I believe that in Europe we have a, we have a very good ecosystem, but um, we, sh we should still work on it to improve it. So let me explain a bit what I mean by that. A company alone, or an institute alone, or a person alone cannot do the job. We need to collaborate. 
There are different aspects to it. We need to develop the, the technologies, for example, in universities. We need to have organizations taking the risk for initial funding of such technologies. At the beginning, you do not, simply do not know what works. So we, you need to try out, and this needs funding from organizations or institutes who are also willing to take such a risk. Then we also need to have bigger organizations helping to, to scale it up. So it is, a, it is a variety of different stakeholders we need, and they need to collaborate. I believe in Europe we have a, a very good ground for that. We have excellent technologies. Also in Germany, I mean, if you look, for example, in the sector of power to x renewable fuels, I mean, this is the epicenter of this technology. And this is only possible to develop if we have the right research, if we have the right political environment, and also get the initial funding to start such, a, such, a, such projects. Okay, that was a diplomatic answer. Uh, you know, so is it a short, yes, we're there, yes, we're almost there, or no, not quite? I mean, I think it, it is obvious we're not there yet. We're simply not there yet. I mean, every year we're emitting 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide uh, every year, so we cannot be there. We need to, I think we have a good, a good position for research. What we need now is to scale it up. For example, the innovation fund uh, from the ETS innovation fund. This is one mechanism to use that. We need to have we need to have millions of, of euros to scale up these technologies, and this just starts. And this we need to continue. That we also can can um, realize the big projects and not just have have small research projects to, to start with technologies. Can you give us some figures? You know, where are your filters? How many buildings or objects and you know, what is your contribution today? Yeah, we have um, around 15 uh, machines built. And 50? 15, five, oh. one five uh, so it's in still operations. Very small scale. It's still very small. We're just about um, installing our next biggest machine. This captures 4,000 tons of carbon dioxide every year, and we are working on being on a million tons every year by the mid of this uh, of this decade. So in about five years from now, and. Um, this is the trajectory we have in front of us, and we need to be on a billion um, tons uh, scale in about, in about 20 years from, from today. Okay, I believe I have time for one more question, which is what's happening in Iceland? Sorry, say again? In Iceland, in Reykjavik, you have a collaboration there. Exactly. Is this is a collaboration with uh, Reykjavik Energy. This is a local utility, and they have a subsidiary called Carpfix, and Carpfix has developed the process of storing carbon dioxide underground. So what they're basically doing, they're turning the CO2 into stone, and we're using this process for storing CO2. So we are delivering the carbon dioxide to Carpfix, and Carpfix stores the CO2 underground, and with this we can basically reduce the CO2 content in the atmosphere. Not on the level yet we need to be, but we have a start. So basically, you know, the, the pollution from the air becomes a small stone? I mean, when we're talking about a couple of thousand tons, it's a rather big stone. Yes, that's that's how it, so it's works. Al it's almost a mountain yeah. in Iceland. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, and um, wish everyone in the next streams uh, good luck presenting other fields of innovation today. Thank you. Thank you very much.